Who doesn't want to be in the water with orcas and humpback whales? Well, we have another project and we have a few slots available for other guests um, to join the trip. We are assigned by Orca Norway, uh, the company of uh, Olaf, who is running the boats in the company, and you could join us. And we're looking for people who will fit into uh, our team, because this is more or less a family trip. We have done this uh, one and a half years ago together with Big Animal Expeditions and Amanda Cotton and we really had a blast. So in order to be able to actually make a decision, we would like to supply a little bit more visual information about what happened one and a half years ago and what might happen again this year. First of all, going out there to see orcas, for that you don't have to be a diver. We're not actually going in the water with a tank. It's snorkeling. It's your decision whether you want to go in a wetsuit or you want to go in a dry suit. The expedition is managed in a way that the big boat with everybody on board will go out into the fjord and basically stay there for one week. And the boat, in this case the Sula, is the home base for the whole team. And from there, when there is enough light, which is only about three, four, five hours a day, um, we go out on smaller dinghies to actually find uh, orcas and humpback whales. And what really impressed me um, a lot is the spirit, how the people there run the operation. There is Olaf. He's a very relaxed, kind of understatement person, the captain, and he also looks like he's the captain. So if you have a chance to chat with him, you're gonna learn a lot about the area, the surrounding, and his experience uh, doing this for so many years. The view, the mountains with snow, snow caps on the top. You can see the moon up there. Yeah, it's nice. And the weather is good today. Oh, I'm just waiting for for the guys connecting the Horek behind uh, Sula. So they are soon ready, so I'm just waiting for the message to go. Yeah, there is a fishing boat right over there. You can see a lot of orcas around the boat. Three, four in the front and also beside there. And, and then there is Pierre. Pierre has been working with orcas for so many years. Yeah, they have been feeding around the fishing boat now and uh, some, uh, some orcas are quiet and they are moving away because they are smaller and they don't need a lot of food. Only the big male will stay around the fishing boat because they need more food. Now you see they are starting to move away slowly because they are filled up. And we just have to follow them. So having him on the boat is always very special. He's very dedicated trying to come up with a plan to bring you as close as possible to the orcas in the water. It's not easy to be close to the orcas in the water. You really need to have a very experienced boat driver and this is where Tony comes into play. Stay close to the boat, don't rush. Just stay there because then the orcas will come closer and then you can figure out which direction you want to go. The experience both of them have position the boat in a way that you can actually quietly slip into the water and see them. It's just amazing. Mostly they will pass by, sometimes they can stop. If the orca is getting interested in you, then you really have a very emotional and very unique moment that uh, will probably result in something like this. Uh, I don't have enough words to describe. 
<laughs> he came so close. I, I mean, like as close as you are to me. I kid you not. Like, yeah. oh my god. The surrounding is just uh, amazing. You have the snow still on the hilltops, but at the same time, you have sunrise and a sunset, and you never really know what it actually is. And floating in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the fjord, sometimes, you know, maybe the boat is a uh, hundred meter away or, or whatever, and you're just floating there, waiting that they will eventually pick you up, and it's completely silent, and there's nothing around, but humpback whales, and orcas. You can hear how they breathe, you turn around and all of a sudden you feel like there's something approaching you and swimming by and passing by and if you hit the right time, you stick your head down in the water, you will get a good look at them. And they have a mission. They are looking for the herrings and the herrings are very deep, deep in the fjords. And it's not very easy for them to actually steer up the herrings and bring them up to the surface. But once that happens, and once it happens that you have the great luck to actually be there, then this is probably the best moment in your whole underwater time that you ever had. Because then the orcas are stationary. They try to hit the herrings with their tail or kind of stun them so that the herring gets unconscious and they will be able to pick them up one by one. And then, at one point, there will be also the humpback whales. And the humpback whales are uh, kind of destroying the whole thing. Because when they come up from below, opening their mouth and swallowing all the herrings at once, then the bait ball gets smaller and smaller, and eventually it's going to disappear. And all the spectators around, the birds, maybe you sitting in the boat, or if you're lucky, you're in the water, super close. that would be our dream to experience again. Even though that's not gonna happen, you never know, it's very unpredictable. You're still in a very, very unique place and also a place that appears to be very unfriendly at first glimpse because it's very cold, the water is four degrees, it's kind of windy sometimes, can also snow a little bit and you're out there on the water. But once you're there, you realize that this is actually so much excitement and fun that you do not feel cold at all. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, I'm broken by the emotion. Wow. Oh, amazing. <laughs> Two words. Unreal. There's no words. There are absolutely no words. <laughs> so if you are interested in joining us on that trip, please write us a message. Um, 
and then we put you on the list and get back to you um, as soon as possible. The good thing about it is this is not about uh, business. We're not trying to make any money with it. Uh, we're just handing over the same price as we are getting from uh, Olaf. Uh, we cannot guarantee that the slot will be uh, still open, so make up your mind uh, quickly uh, and decide uh, as soon as possible. We also created a group which is called um, Open Spots on Behind the Mask Trips. There, if you sign in there, you will always get information about open slots that will come up. And yeah, if you're lucky, and if we are lucky, we're gonna have a great trip together. And you can see uh, firsthand how Behind the Mask uh, is working and how our films are actually done.